Hey everyone, I'm back. You know, I wanted to talk about this uh, Kim Potter case with the um, Dante Wright. I think I had his name wrong earlier in the other video and I apologize, but um, it's just so many of these, you know, daunting, traumatic um, situations that keep coming up, but especially with, um, you know, black men and, uh, you know, driving while black and being, you know, killed at the hands of these police officers. And it seems that they're always fighting to keep them from going to prison and also giving them, you know, very little time. And in this case right here, this is coming from Chicago's very own WGN9, but you can find this story on Newsbreak. You can find it on the New York, I believe, Times. This story is out there, but it says that she, you know, she was the former suburban Minneapolis police officer who says she confused her handgun uh, for her taser when she fatally shot Dante Wright. She was sentenced Friday, and this is today, February 18th, 2022, to two years in prison a penalty below state guidelines after the judge found mitigating factors warranted a lesser sentence. Now, when I read this article yesterday, uh, they were uh, yesterday, but it was talking about that uh, the prosecution didn't think that she should get less time, but she should get somewhere in between the time uh, that was warranted. But yet and still, here it is again, where this judge is finding mitigating factors to want a lesser sentence. And I think she should have got more than two years. Now, the other thing is, when I read this article yesterday, the prosecutor was saying that even if she doesn't get the time that she should get, you know, that she could do good for the community. She could, you know, speak out about tasers and the difference between tasers and handguns. And um, she can reach out to the manufacturers and, and, and she can also talk to the family. What is she going to talk to the family for? You've already done what you've done. You've never used or identified his name when you were testifying for what you did do. And so now you're going to go speak to this family, what, for eight, for how many years you're going to speak to this family? And so now she's getting two years, a two-year sentence, and she probably won't even serve all of that two years. See, Potter was convicted in December of first and second degree manslaughter in the April 11th killing of Wright, a 20-year-old black motors. And we hear this all the time, and we see it all the time, where black motors are being gunned down by police officers over minor traffic stops. And it says she was sentenced only on the more serious charge in accordance with state law. Why wasn't she sentenced on all the charges? But they only sentenced her with one uh, one, one serious charge. They're always finding a loopholes and mitigating factors to not sentence these, uh, you know, these police officers that sit up here and shoot black motorists. And it says Judge Regina Chu said the lesser sentence was warranted because Potter was in the line of duty and doing her job and attempting to lawfully arrest Dante Wright when she said she mistook her gun for her taser. Now, we know people make mistakes, but this is a mistake that can never come back. This young man's life is gone. He left the child behind. So this mistake is a real huge mistake, and you're supposed to have training, and you're supposed to be calm enough to pull the right item, to pull the right gun, not pull you're so nervous and you're just trying to hurry up and shoot somebody because your pride and your ego gets in the way when people outsmart you, these citizens. And officers do get angry. They have feelings too. They put their emotions in it and they get angry. And so she was in a rush to try to, you know, do whatever she felt she needed to do. And she pulled the wrong gun. She pulled the real gun instead of the taser gun and killed this man, shot him in the chest. While they are saying she was trying to protect another officer who could have been dragged and seriously injured if Wright drove away. Now, she could have shot out a tire. How come she didn't shoot out his tire then? Because it's saying could have been dragged. It didn't say that he was dragging her partner, the other officer, but he could have dragged. So why couldn't she have shot the tire of his car? But she didn't. So this is one of the sad, saddest cases. And so Chu is saying it, it's the saddest cases that she'd had on her bench in 20 years. But you know what? It is a sad case. And it's, it's another sad case for us to have to keep hearing about these stories and the lack of prison time that these officers get for killing another black man, another black person that was a human being. 
And it goes on to talk about how Potter, Officer Potter received hundreds and hundreds of letters supporting Potter. But what about Dante Wright? What about his family? What about the support of his family and the loss that they are going through and suffering because of what this officer did? She made a big, big mistake and Dante Wright is never coming back. And it says on the one hand, a young man was killed and on the other, a respected 26 year veteran police officer. 26 years she's on the force and made that mistake. Well, maybe she should have retired at 25 years. So she wouldn't have made that mistake. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. And it says made a tragic error by pulling her handgun instead of her taser. And now she's saying she's sorry it happened. But when she was on the stand, the mother is saying she never identified Dante Wright as a person. She just kept saying uh, the driver. So let's hear what the Dante Wright's mother says. She says, so Katie Wright says, after the sentencing that Pot, you know, said after the sentence that Potter murdered my son, adding today the justice system murdered him all over again. Speaking before the sentence was imposed, the tearful mother said she could never forgive Potter and would only refer to her as the defendant because Potter only referred to her 20-year-old son as the driver at trial. They seem to want respect, but they don't give it, right? So she says she never once said his name. And for that, I'll never be able to forgive you. And I'll never be able to forgive you for what you've stolen from us, Wright said. A police officer who was supposed to serve and protect so much took so much away from us. My life and my world will never be the same again, she said. Adding later, Dante, Wright, Demet Dante Demetrius Wright, I will continue to fight in your name until driving while black is no longer a death sentence. And we know that a lot of driving while black winds up as a death sentence. And it says Wright was killed after Brooklyn Center officers pulled him over for having expired license tags and an air freshener hanging from his rearview mirror. Now I know that you can get stopped uh, where I live at too if you have, um, you know, something hanging from your mirror. So, uh, you know, they will pull you over for that. And especially in uh, the city of San Bernardino, uh, they will definitely do it. And one of them is loud music. One of them is loud music. They will pull you over for loud music. And I know someone that got pulled over for loud music, playing loud music. And they were pulled over for that in the city of San Bernardino, raggedy San Bernardino. I'm saying that, but not all of it, but there's a lot of it is. And they got the audacity. But, you know, this is what they do. Loud music. And you're driving down probably a, a, a major street and you're not, uh, you know, you're not disturbing people because it's no homes on that street and where this person was pulled over. But yet and still, they got a ticket for driving for loud music. OK, they were cited for that. Now, Wright was killed after Brooklyn Center police officer pulled him over for having expired license tags and an air freshener, okay, we read that hanging from his rearview mirror, the shooting which came in the midst of Derek Chauvin's trial on murder charges and George Floyd's killing sparked several days of demonstrations outside the Brooklyn Center police station marked by tear gas and clashes between protesters and police. So Potter was convicted in December of first and second degree manslaughter, okay, and uh, but they sentenced her for only two years, which, you know, on the first degree manslaughter, which was the most serious charge, which carries a presumptive penalty of just over seven years in prison. But they didn't give her that. So Wright family attorney, of course, the Amalam Chancellor, as they called him, Ben Crump, said they don't understand why such consideration was given to a white officer in the killing of a young black man when a black officer, Mohammed Noor, got a longer sentence for the killing of a white woman, Justin Racine Diamond. Uh, Damon, excuse me. What we see today is the legal system in black and white. And this is what I was talking about yesterday. And I know that was a controversial video and I considered taking it down, but I'm not going to take it down because it needs to stay up because my voice is important too. And I realized that. And so I didn't take it down and I, I, I thought about it and I'm not going to take it down. I'm going to leave it up. And if YouTube decides to take it down later, then fine, but I'm leaving it up there. And it says, um, and he goes on to say, but the judge said the cases are not the same as other high profile killings by police. Really? Really? I thought about that, too. And I said, hmm, is no one not really speaking out about Dante Wright and his family, Katie, his mom that's grieving? 
a loss they can never get back. They can never get their son, her, she can never get her son back. See, this is not a cop found guilty of murder for using his knee to pin down a person for nine and a half minutes as he gasped for air. This is not a cop found guilty of manslaughter for intentionally drawing his firearm and shooting across his partner and killing an unarmed woman who approached his squad, Chu said. This is a cop who made a, mis a tragic mistake. This is what the judge is saying. So for someone with no criminal history, such as Potter, the state guidelines on first degree manslaughter range from slightly more than six years to about eight and a half years in prison with the presumptive sentence being just over seven years. And I know that the prosecutor had asked for that in the prior story that I read yesterday, but then he started to go on and talk about what she could do good if she didn't get the jail time. But when have prosecutors said, what can black people do good without giving them jail time? You know what I'm saying? Like I've never heard where a black a, a prosecutor start making recommendations for you know oh well they could do good you know if they don't get the jail time we see we understand if they don't get it we understand if the judge doesn't give them the sentencing of prison time oh they can do this they can speak out they can go to you know conferences and seminars and they can work with other families and people who does that this is the prosecutor doing that okay and it says, prosecutors said the presumptive sentence was proper, but defense attorneys asked for a sentence below the guidelines, including a sentence of probation only. His life mattered, and that life was taken, Prosecutor Matt Frank said before sentencing. His name is Dante Wright. Say it again, hashtag Dante Wright. We have to say his name. He was not just a driver. He was a living human being, a life. Say his name, Dante Wright. Man, I tell you, defense attorney Paul Ng told the judge that Wright's death was beyond tragic for everybody involved, but he added this was an in, excuse me, this was an unintentional crime. It was an accident. It was a mistake. And you know, we do know people make mistakes, including officers, but how many mistakes are they going to make killing black people, black men, and, and they don't get held accountable? But then... When it comes to the white situation, like, you know, black and white, as Crump said, but when it comes to the white situation, they, they are given all the type of leniency. Why blacks are steady being killed while driving and all types of stuff. And it's just really sad. And it says that... Um, Potter would be willing to meet with Wright's family and to speak to police officers about taser mix-ups. Why would, why would, why? That's not going to make it better for Miss Katie Wright. She doesn't even want to speak to her. She already said what she said. Respect that. You got to deal with that with God now, Potter. You can't, and, and these other people trying to push her up on this family. They have to deal with their loss and they have to deal with God and let God work in them and work in their spirit, right? For forgiveness and all those things, because we can't make people forgive. And she has to grieve and get to a place where she's ready to forgive, if that ever happens, because she said she never would, you know? And we got, as black people, stop being so symbolic, man. It is what it is. She did it. Dante Wright is never coming back. And then he held up a box explaining what he said were among thousands of letters and cords of so cards of support for Potter. Isn't that a slap in the face to brag about all the support that this police officer is getting because she killed another black man? People took time to write her, Ng said. This is unheard of for a defendant. I dare say no one in this room has ever seen anything like it. So since people wrote, she got that support, she shouldn't get more than two years. So evidence at Potter's trial showed officers learned he had an outstanding warrant for a weapons possession charge and they tried to arrest him when he pulled away. Why didn't she just shoot the tire? I'm telling you. Video showed Potter shouted several times that she was going to use her taser on right. But she had her gun in her hand and fired one shot into his chest. See, look, listen to this. Chu said Potter will serve two-thirds of her sentence or 16 months in prison. I told you she's not going to serve their whole two years. With the rest on parole, she has earned credit for 58 days. Potter has been at the state's women's prison in Shokopee since the guilty verdict. 
Her attorney said Friday that her mental and physical health has declined because she is isolated for her safety. You know what? They always talk about the pain, the loss, the suffering of these police officers, especially white ones, when they kill another black person. You know, I, I, I of course she's going to suffer if she's in prison, if she's incarcerated or in jail. Should she not suffer like the rest of the people that have suffered? Especially black men being incarcerated for 44 years. And even some longer. When they're innocent. When their rights have been violated. Constitutional amendment. Uh, they don't get a fair trial. Who's writing letters and supporting them? And it took 44 years for victim Sim Victor Simmons. And I've done other videos on black men that have been, you know, serving long sentences for crimes they didn't commit and that the prosecution or the, the uh, police officers had evidence and the DA withheld and suppressed evidence and didn't do anything. And it took them this long and they have to pay out settlements. And then they want to cheat the the uh, the uh, incarcerated person. They want to cheat them out of the money they owe because there's a cap on it, all that stuff. They can never get their life back. Dante Wright will never get his life back. He'll never, Dante Wright will never play ball with his son or see him go to school. So Dante Wright's son, uh, Shiner Whitaker, she said, my son shouldn't have to wear a rest in peace shirt of his dad. But he's wearing it. Just don't make sense to me, you guys. I, I just, it's just too much. Where, you know, you could just see the difference. Uh, the legal disparities, injustice, the disparities in the judicial system when it comes to black people and I keep saying that over and over again because that's what happens that's that's what happened it's really sad just and then you know we have um Suge Knight's attorney takes a plea deal and he's barred for life from practicing law um <clears throat> it's really sad what he was up to now he should have just stopped all that um, you know, Suge Knight, Suge Knight's uh, uh, attorney should have just, now nah, he going, you know, he can't even, he had lost his livelihood, you know, um, he can't practice law anymore, you know, this don't make no sense. Now, this is Marion Suge, you know, everybody know, <clears throat> excuse me, Suge Knight, former attorney, pleaded guilty to conspiracy and perjury, <clears throat> excuse me, charges Wednesday and will be barred from practicing law for life after prosecutors accused him of plotting to bribe witnesses so they would lie for the rap module when he faced murder charges in 2016. Now, you know what? There was a lot of perjury going on in that R. Kelly trial, huh? Do you think the prosecutors made sure to hold the people that were, you know, the witnesses or the accusers, yeah, the witnesses on the stand accountable for their perjury? No because it was R. Kelly and they wanted to get him, right? So here they're holding him accountable just like they did, was it Little Kim? I think, I, yeah, Little Kim. When they wanna get you, they're gonna get you. And these prosecutors will do all they can, like, you know, to play these games, to get, to get what they want. And it's saying that uh, Matthew Fletcher because they originally accused him of conspiracy to suborn perjury, obstruct justice, and bribe witnesses after obtaining a warrant to listen in on jailhouse phone calls between the attorney and Knight in 2015. He also was charged as an accessory after the fact in Knight's case and faced an unrelated account of bribery in connection with testimony he gave at a disciplinary hearing before the State Bar of California in 2016. Now, he should have known better not to do it, man. Your life is on the line. Don't put yourself 
in the situation. The same client that you represented, now you are facing jail time because you represent the client that's in jail and now you're facing jail time. See, that's a no-go. You gotta make sure you stay out of jail by doing the right thing no matter what. But it says jury jurors began weighing the charges against Fletcher early this week following a two-month trial, but a plea deal started to come together Wednesday before Wednesday morning before a verdict could be reached, according to Fletcher's co-counsel, Alexandra Kazarian. Under the terms of the deal, Fletcher pleaded no contest to one count of conspiracy to obstruct justice and one count of perjury. He will be placed on probation for five years and must resign from the state bar for life, according to Kazarian, who said that if Fletcher does not resign within 90 days, he could face jail time. So, since he's not going to go to jail, he ha in case unless he does not resign from the bar within 90 days, he's going to face jail time. But they gave him five years probation, and he must resign from the state bar for life. That's a long time to resign from the state bar for life. I could see maybe five years, but for life. Did they do that for Michael Avenatti? Did they tell him he could never practice law again once his legal woes and he serves jail time or, or house arrest? You know, what's going to happen with Michael Avenatti? I would have to go back and recheck that case. But because I try not to even read about that sorry, low down person that made all these accusations. Who did he think? I mean, as I sat there and listened to those interviews, I was like, who does Michael Avenatti think that he is to get and do all these press, hold these press conferences talking? about someone he needs to be in jail too and they don't want to put him in jail he's in his friend's apartment that's where he's residing at while he's that's not right he needs to be behind bars for the things that he's done he needs to be behind bars it's unfortunate but again we're talking about white people and so if um fletcher is convict, convicted um convicted as charged, Fletcher will have to face nearly four years in prison. So Fletcher did not immediately respond to a request for comment. And you know what happened with uh, Knight. And you know, he uh, he said he was, you know, uh, defending himself from, because you know, he was the death row um, records found and he was defending himself from an attack by armed assailant. So if you remember that, you know, that case right there, I won't, you know, get into that case and stuff. But um but let me finish what the article is saying. And it says that, um, it says, um, detectives first heard Knight and his fiance, Toy Lynn Kelly, discuss paying witnesses on a jailhouse call in 2015 when Kelly said Fletcher had put bread on the streets to try to get people to come forward. Based on comments made in those phone calls, investigators from the L.A. County Sheriff's Department obtained a warrant to listen to calls between Knight and Fletcher that would have otherwise been protected by attorney-client privilege. Months later, detectives had an informant approach Knight with an offer to provide useful testimony, even though he admitted he was not at the crime scene. In recorded conversations with the informant, Fletcher made several comments that prosecutors pointed to as proof of conspiracy. And it says, if these, you know, mofos got a price, well, let's get that mofo price paid, Fletcher said to the informant on one call played in court. I told Suge, man, you can always make some more money. You can't take, you can't make any more freedom, though. And so while Fletcher and some de defense attorneys have expressed concern that the case was part of an overly broad pursuit of Knight and his inner circle, prosecutors have repeatedly painted the case as a necessary effort to purge the legal system of a corrupt attorney. At one point during closing arguments, Deputy District Attorney Stephen uh, Mackrich compared Fletcher to fictional lawyer Saul Goodman the morally bankrupt defense counsel to drug kingpin Walter White on the AMC show Breaking Bad. The justice system needs lawyers that seek the truth, Deputy District Attorney Phil Sterling said after the deal was reached Wednesday. There is no place for dirty lawyers. Justice was served. Well, you know what? I wish he would say the same thing about these prosecutors. There is no place for dirty prosecutors. And we see dirty prosecutors all the time. And I can name them again. I can go and name some more. The list is so long. You can figure it out. You can Google it. You can do whatever. You know in your mind that there, there are dirty prosecutors that have done things and 
there is no place for them either. But yet still, they're still allowed to practice. They're still allowed to prosecute. They're still allowed, you know, to do all these things and, and get witnesses to lie on the stand, grant immunity to people that shouldn't have immunity, all types of stuff, and then deal with the judge and, co and cohorts and conspire with the judge. And, and guess what? There's no place for dirty prosecutors either, but we see them time after time over and over again, right? So you should district... Deputy District Attorney Phil Sterling, you should have that energy for every single prosecutor, and especially the ones that are dirty, that are prosecuting these innocent people, innocent black men, innocent black people. You should have that same energy. Deputy District Attorney Phil Sterling, where's that same energy? That there is no place for dirty prosecutors. Well, anyway, Fletcher denied all wrongdoing at trial. He said any comments he was heard making on the calls about money were in reference to his interest in compensating people for videos that they may have shot at the scene that showed attackers armed with guns. Fletcher has repeatedly reminded jurors that prosecutors did not produce any witnesses who said he had asked them to lie or offer them money. So to win a conspiracy conviction, prosecutors needed to prove only that Fletcher and one of his co-conspirators, a group that included Knight, Kelly, and Culpepper, plotted to either bribe a witness, obstruct justice, or suborn perjury. And it's not R. Kelly, you guys. It's a different Kelly that w was with, you know, Culpepper, okay? And um, Culpepper has yet to be tried in state court. He is scheduled to face trial on federal charges of cashing more than $1 million in stolen checks next month. And it says Lou Shapiro, a prominent L.A. defense attorney, said he did not believe Fletcher's case could, would have a chilling effect on other lawyers because the comments made on the recorded calls were far outside the bounds of normal attorney-client discussions. The terms of the deal, however, might serve as a painful reminder to other lawyers of the risk of running up against the edges of the law on behalf of their clients, Shapiro said. Everything he worked for in life, he has to give up now. And that's true. This is what Shapiro is saying, but I said it early. He's given up everything that he worked for. I hope his student loans are paid by now because, you know, those student loans is woo, through the roof. So hopefully Fletcher's student loans is already paid and he was already living a decent life before he got caught up and lured in <laughs> and allowed himself to be lured in and tempted by this. And now he's losing everything. He can never face law, so he's going to have to find another profession. And actually, if he had, I wonder if he served four years in jail, would he be able to still practice law after his four years? When he, because he would have to, you know, uh, write the bar and all of that for them to determine that. So that could be worse for him than jail. And I was just thinking about that earlier in this article as I was speaking about this. Should he just serve jail time and then still be able to practice later on? Because this could be worse than jail time. I mean, and the prosecution knows that. They know that because they, they got a law degree. So they know that. That's why they gave that plea deal like that, because they know that. They know that him not being able to practice law for the rest of his life is far worse than serving four years in jail, where he might only have to serve some of that time in jail. You know what I'm saying? And then get out and write the bar because he has to resign also. Whereas usually you don't have to resign if you know they can come up where they don't make you resign and then you just have to reapply or whatever you do. But it's really a sad day when things like this happen, but you got yourself caught up in something, whatever way you went with it, and now you are going to suffer for the rest of your life because of this situation. So um, talk to you guys soon.